They're dumping everything. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. The banks are having a fire sale, and you won't believe why. Let's go to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up. As banks stuck with $42 billion in debt seize the chance to offload it, and they want to do it fast. Stabilization in the leveraged loan and high yield, or junk bond markets, has led to an opening for deals, including for bonds and lows tied to the buyout of TV ratings business Nielsen Holdings, as banks try to reduce debt on their balance sheets before the holidays. And one of the questions that we should be asking right now is, why are they in such a rush to get rid of this debt before the holidays? Is it has to do with their fourth quarter earnings that they're concerned about? Is there something coming next year? That's the question here, because you know, I want you to understand, the banks are in business to make money. So when they start unloading things, it usually isn't a good sign. Offloading the so-called hung debt, even at steep discounts, confines losses to this financial year while also appeasing risk departments and regulators. And again, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless this year for their earnings is so good that they can take a bit of a loss and it not hurt. Why is it this year that matters and not next year? We're gonna to get to the bottom of this and it's not what you think. Hung debt has been a big problem for Wall Street this year, and banks have taken huge mark-to-market -market losses on deals they underwrote before a rapid rise in interest rates crushed funding markets and the threat of recession quashed investor demand for riskier assets. And here you can see the banks even got this wrong. They didn't see interest rates going up this fast. They issued a bunch of debt. And what we can rewrite that statement to say is, hey, without the Fed's easy money policies and willingness to buy up all the bonds in the world, we've got to offload this junk. We're suddenly out of buyers. With that backdrop, stabilization of leveraged loan prices, which recently recovered to an average close of 93 cents on the dollar, have created fertile ground for deals. And still why some debt is being offloaded, more recent buyouts are adding to the pile, including about $13 billion of financing related to Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter. And now we're perhaps starting to get to the real story here. Now, could you imagine if you were sitting on $13 billion in Twitter debt right now? Would you feel confident about it? Would you feel really good that they're going to make their interest payments and hold that loan to maturity and pay you back? Well, now we're starting to find out that then perhaps the real reason the banks are worried here and why they have having a fire sale as they don't think these bonds are any good. And private equity buyout of a majority stake in Roper Technologies industrial operations business. And that brings the total amount of debt funded by the banks for buyouts and acquisitions in the US and Europe to around 42 billion. And you can see Twitter, Citrix, Tenneco, Brightspeed and Nielsen ranking among the highest sitting on the bank's balance sheets. But for many lenders, offloading chunks of hung debt, even at a discount, is better than letting it languish on their books, tying up capital that could be deployed elsewhere. And again, you see this spin, and I want this really doesn't make any sense because if this debt was good and it was generating a decent yield, does it really hurt the banks to sit on it? Particularly if they believe the value of that debt is gonna come back up if interest rates were gonna go down, then they could be made whole later on by holding it on their balance sheets and selling it later, but instead we go back and what does it say here? Again, is better than letting it languish on their books, tying up capital that could be deployed elsewhere, suggesting to us that the banks have a much better opportunity elsewhere to say, hey, you know what? My loss is your gain. I've got much better loans I can make over here and cover those losses. That's not what's really going on here. Let's get a little bit deeper because when we find out the banks are really afraid of what's coming. U.S. banks are tightening lending standards, raising the risk of a recession. Share of those now restricting credit is typical of downturns. So here you can see on the same day, we have two similar headlines. One about, hey, we need to offload this debt because we have great opportunities elsewhere. And the other one is saying, hey, we're not out lending anymore. Now you can interpret this one of two ways. Either things are getting worse and the banks are afraid of getting, they're not gonna get their money back, or we can interpret it to mean the banks have so many loans to choose from that they need to restrict the number that they'll look at because the deals are so plentiful and so profitable. I'll let you pick which one it is. The Federal Reserve isn't the only one tightening credit. Commercial banks are too, and that does indeed spell trouble for the US economy. 
The proportion of U.S. banks tightening in terms on loans for medium and large businesses and for commercial real estate rose last quarter to levels usually seen during recessions. And as we know, banks generally don't lend during recessions, so we can already figure out what's going on here. They're afraid of a recession. They want to offload this debt because they're not making new loans. What they're doing is battening down the hatches and going into survival mode. Lending standards for credit cards and other consumer loans also became more restrictive as the Fed raised interest rates and the economic outlook darkened. And here you can see in a chart of commercial bank lending standards and on net anywhere above the zero bound is tightening and we can note prior recessions have seen levels of bank tightening similar to this. The tightening of standards by senior loan officers goes part and parcel with significantly higher rates and a shrinking balance sheet by the Fed. They're basically self-reinforcing. Well, let's put that to the test because part of it's true, but not all of it. And here you can see on this chart from the St. Louis Fed of the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial industrial loans, that in blue. Now I wanna point out that anywhere the blue line is above this horizontal black line, it is tightening. On the way up, they're increasing the rate of tightening. On the way down, they're decreasing the rate of tightening, but it's all tightening above the black line. Here are the federal funds rate, and we can note that there's periods of funds rate rises and banks are still on net easing. Here we can see, of course, funds rate rising and now banks are tightening, but look at this. The Fed is easing and banks are still tightening. We can see it here. Fed is easing, banks are still tightening. Here we can see the Fed's tightening the banks net on net ease. So that isn't the whole story here at all, but let's keep digging to see if we can find it. The tightening of lending standards by the banks and the impact that will have on the economy means that the Fed might not have to raise rates as much as feared to restrain demand and rein in elevated inflation. Central banks are expected to increase rates to about 5%, which I think will be very difficult, but that's a good view here that on net now, standards of tightening are so high that we're at levels consistent with at least the Fed pausing. And as we go into this December meeting now uh, in a few weeks, it sure puts up the potential that the Fed may back off their aggressive hiking cycle, may even pause depending on the data between now and then. Banks told the Fed they had tightened lending standards on commercial industrial loans for a variety of reasons. Let's see if one of them is the fact they have so many loans, but in no, indeed they say a more uncertain or less favorable economic outlook and reduced tolerance for risk. Again, you see the banks are battening down the hatches. Their loss isn't your, isn't your gain. <laughs> Their loss is probably gonna be your bigger loss. And now we start to figure out why they wanna get rid of it is they don't wanna get stuck with it and have to carry it in next year when they think a recession is looming. A significant number also cited decreased liquidity in the secondary market for such loans and less aggressive competition from other banks or non-bank lenders who, knew, who normally buy up all this garbage. And now we head over to the Wall Street Euro where we get to the answer but in the wrong way as the yield curve inversion reaches new extremes. Yields on treasuries largely reflect investors' expectation for what short-term interest rates set by the Fed will average over the life of the bond. Longer-term yields are generally higher than short-term yields. That is correct. Not for this reason, because the investors want to guard against the risk of unexpected inflation and rate increases. That's not the case at all. You normally see long end of the curve rates that are higher because it actually compensates bondholders for future growth and inflation expectations. Not unexpected inflation and certainly not Fed rate hikes. But let's keep going because the author of this article gets it wrong again. As they say, notably, the yield curve has become more deeply inverted in recent weeks largely due to good economic news? Yeah, I don't think that's the case at all. Usually inverted yield curves do not come with good news. Let's look at these last two charts and we can put this whole bank thing together and we can see that they're afraid of a recession. That's what they're all trying to do is offload. Here we have the net percentage of banks tightening standards for commercial industrial loans here again in blue. Now we have the 10 year, three month yield curve, the baseline for it being right down here. And we note that periods where rates are rising, indeed the initial phases, you tend to see banks tightening lending standards. But when that curve is deeply inverted and starts to rise, meaning rates are now falling, you'll notice that on net banks still continue to tighten lending standards because they know what's coming and that indeed my friends, is 
a recession. And what usually happens during the recessions, as we can see on this chart, now looking at 30-year yields overlaid against the commercial industrial loans percentage of banks tightening the standards. And what do we see? That when banks are tightening, that would be above the black line, yields tend to fall almost every single time, putting us in a position that you can see banks aren't worried about the fact that yields are going lower and that their bonds are gonna come back to normal. They're worried now that a steepening yield curve says a recession is coming and these junk bonds are gonna turn out to be super junk and worth even less. So again, this comes back to my loss isn't your gain, the bank's loss is your bigger loss. And now you're seeing the reason they wanna get rid of them before the holiday season is because they think a recession's coming early next year. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.